It's the kind of island you can dream about. No hustle and bustle, no problems. Every day is a perfect day, and every night the island is bathed in starlight. The lives of its people are keyed to eternal things. The sea they love, the incoming and outgoing of its tides. It's Margarita Island, just off the northern coast of Venezuela. Up until a few years ago, you couldn't have reached Margarita except by a little boat. Since then, quite a few changes have been made. However, they haven't altered Margarita's way of life, and they're not likely to, for nobody can change the sea. But change has made the island more accessible. To get a better idea where Margarita is located, let's look at this map showing Venezuela's position on the northern tip of South America. Margarita is just two hours flight from Caracas. You'll find plenty of taxis in Margarita's larger towns. This is Porlamar. Its name means by the sea, and streets here are much wider than in most Spanish colonial towns. Venezuela is turning Margarita into an exotic vacation spot. The big game fishing offshore is probably unequaled in the Caribbean. And as you can see, the island's handicrafters are now catering to the tourist trade. You just couldn't be seen in a hand-me-down hat, not in Margarita. These hats are made of sisal grown on the island. You can't say Margarita without thinking about pearls. The Spaniards and their descendants have fished for pearls in Margarita's waters for over 400 years. They're still known as among the richest beds in the world. Venezuela's government has very wisely outlawed any mechanical means of gathering the oysters. Anything less selective than human hands can destroy thousands of potential pearl-bearing oysters in a single scoop. They look casual, these pearl seekers but there's an excitement in opening carefully chosen oysters that's shared by everybody in town. A pearl that sold for $50,000 was found some years ago. The yield in any one year runs about half a million dollars. Yes, you can dive for pearls. It's one of the big attractions of Margarita. And if you've got a skin diving rig and a good pair of lungs, you could end up with a necklace. Collecting pearls isn't too important when there's so much fun in just hunting for them. Well, they haven't found that oyster bed. This gentleman has his own way of finding pearls. He digs them up right out of the sand. That jug, which he found in the ruins of an old Spanish town, held nine pounds of pearls, and some were already drilled for necklaces. He's Dr. Joseph Cruxent, a Venezuelan archaeologist. Thousands of glistening beauties fresh from the sea. You could buy the lot of them on Margarita for about $150,000. Not too much if you don't like to dive for them. Old forts, some with highly romantic histories, are still standing on Margarita. They were built as a defense against pirates. Later, when Venezuelans were fighting for their independence, they were a defense against the fleets of the Spanish crown. Margarita was several times ransacked by pirates. One of them, Pierre Dautin, finally retired there and built a home which is still standing. He was the richest buccaneer in the Caribbean and is said to have buried an enormous treasure. 
An old French cannonball makes a nice souvenir. You never lose sight of the fact on Margarita that you are on an island. It's only 41 miles long and 20 wide. One of the many old towns that dot its 200 miles of beaches is Juan Griego. Anyone for water skiing? The bay at Juan Griego is perfect for all water sports. The climate has an invigorating desert-like dryness. Margarita's sheltered water is crystal clear with very little surf. Other parts of the island have a wild beauty that seems alien to its quiet towns. The sea, captured by rock, angrily shows its teeth. Robinson Crusoe would have felt at home on this stretch of beach. Nobody within miles. And what do people do when they're playing Robinson Crusoe? Well, they look for food. She says she wants that one, the big one. The problem now is how to open it. There's no zipper. Better try a machete. There's no end of things to see and do on Margarita. Hidden bays reveal strange sights, rock formations curiously sculptured by the sea. Seabirds roost on that rock, and for a very good reason. The waters beneath it teem with fish. There's a fishing boat coming in now. They've stopped the motor. Mustn't disturb the schools of fish. Fishing is the number one industry in Margarita. It's even bigger than the pearl industry. Here the whole town turns out to net the hall. Men, women, and children all lend a hand when the strike is a big one. The waters off Margarita fairly boil with fish. Red snapper, Spanish mackerel, bluefish, pompano, lobster. Any morning at the colorful fish markets in Porlamar and Juan Griego, you can have your choice of at least 20 varieties of fish. For the sportsmen, there are blue marlin, sailfish, tarpon, bonefish, and other sporty varieties. These are tuna. It's a great day when a catch like this is made. They'll bring a good price in Caracas and other Venezuelan cities. And in scores of fishermen's homes, the latch string will be out and there'll be feasting and music and dancing. This dance grew out of the fishing industry. It tells an eternal story of the fishermen and the fish. A story of thanksgiving. A story of people whose lives are keyed to the sea they love and the gifts it brings.